Wow, it's good to be back. It's been mm, over a month, actually. So it's, it's just always a blessing to be here. I love seeing all of you guys. You guys are getting big. But also, some of you guys saw my son today, and hopefully you'll be able to see him a little bit later as well. He's also getting big, so that's what happens with the passage of time. You grow. So uh, I'm very excited to be here to be able to share with you um, a special story from the Bible. Um, and I want you to hopefully take this time to kind of reflect and think about what you can be doing in times of crisis, in times of challenge. Um, and I want us to kind of think about this character that we'll be learning about here in the Bible. Uh, who remembers last time I was here who I shared about? Yes, Daniel Nam. The man who can't talk. Mm. That was one aspect of the story. Who was I actually focusing on? Yes, Victoria. On, on no. Yes. Oh, uh, okay, hold on. Yes, Jace. One more time. Zachariah. That was not me. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. Daniel Kwok. Elizabeth. There you go. Special snack for Daniel Kwok later. I'm just kidding. There's, there was no prize. Um, all right. So we focus a little bit on Elizabeth, who was actually pregnant at the same time as Mary. Today, we're going to be focusing on another woman of the Bible that is a little less common, um, but I think is a very, very special character and person that we should learn about. So uh, my message is called The Diplomat. Who knows what a diplomat is? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. So someone involved in politics. Um, diplomats often work in a building that we call the embassy or a consulate, uh, which is basically a different, for example, if you go to the center of Seoul and you go to Gwanghwamun area, square, there is this large building that's not very pretty with this white fence around it. That is the U.S. Embassy. Uh, and you have to go there as a U.S. citizen, for example, to get your passport done. That embassy is actually a part of U.S. land, which is very fascinating. Now, a diplomat is somebody who works uh, usually for the government, uh, who is appointed uh, and is given as given the role of negotiations, if there's issues between two countries, especially for, as, we're, as we heard before, political, economic, social relations with other countries. But another aspect of a diplomat is someone who is tactful, skillful, and can manage delicate situations and, of course, interacting and handling people. So today I want to share with you the story of Abigail. Who's heard of the story of Abigail? Okay, only Daniel Nam. All right. Daniel Nam, you want to come up and share? Uh, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. All right, let's get into the story of Abigail. So, Abigail, to understand her story and where she fits into the Bible, we have to back up a little bit. We're going into 1 Samuel chapter 25, and we're actually looking at David. Now, at this time, the prophet Samuel has passed away. And so they were grieving, and there was a lot of sadness after that. Now, David took his men into the wilderness of Paran. And there, he was actually um, working and kind of relaxing and spending time with his men, who were soldiers mostly, and servants. And while they were there, they met a man in Carmel. Now, this man was very rich. This man had thousands of sheep, actually 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was shearing the goats, the sheep in Carmel. So shearing means when you shave it. So when you have sheep in your lot, you have to wait until they're fluffy enough to start shaving them down so you can actually use their 
wool for clothing, for blanket, right? And so now it's shearing season. And during this time, David and his men were actually out there with the shepherds and the shearers and protecting them during this time. Why? It's actually very easy for shepherds to be targets of uh, theft for stealing and for violence because they're just kind of out there with their sheep, right? So a lot of people actually get their sheep stolen when they're out in the land. So David and his men protected these shepherds and these shearers. Now, this man, this rich man's name was Nabal. And his wife, his name is Abigail. Now, Abigail was considered very beautiful and discerning. That's how she was described in the Bible. And fortunately, her husband, Nabal, was considered rude, harsh, violent even. And so you can imagine that maybe her marriage wasn't maybe the happiest. Now, during this time, David now realizes, ah, the shepherds are done shepherding. They're going to go ahead and shave their sheep, and they'll probably take them back in. So David goes ahead and tells his servants, servants, go to the ball. Let him know I have been protecting his shepherds, his sheep. No harm has come to them. Ask them for maybe some food, maybe a little small, small dinner, a feast. Okay? It's a fair ask. So David's men go over to Nabal. And they say exactly what David tells them to say. Hi, hey, we've been we've been helping you guys out, making sure that your shepherds are protected. So would you be willing to Feed us just, just a little bit, right? And Nabal, being the man that he is, he says, David? Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? I don't know this man. Why should I give him even a piece of bread? As I mentioned, he is a harsh, rude, foolish man. So, David's servants go back and tell David what happened. Um, yeah, so Nabal's not really a good guy, and he's not really to feed us. And how do you think David responds? He's very, very upset. Well, that's rude. All right, everybody, put your swords onto you. We're going to battle. This man needs to learn a lesson. And so they start to strap on their swords. David himself straps on the sword. And about 400 men start to follow David to Nabal. It's a lot of people. Now, during this time, one of the servants of David run to Abigail. Very, very smart. And he says, Abigail, I need to tell you something. So your husband, you know your husband, yeah, yeah. So we helped him out and he is not repaying the favor. And of course, as you can imagine, David is very upset. Do you think you can help? I mean, like, if, if you don't help, your whole, your whole family, your whole town, all of your sheep, you're going to die. Your, your sheep is going to make a plan maybe i don't know it's going to be a lot of blood and so what does she do let's find out abigail hears this news and so she quickly makes haste and she took 200 loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep already prepared and five sayas of parched grain and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and lay them on donkeys. And she said to her young man, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But here's a key. She did not tell her husband, Nabal, her plan. She rode on the donkey and under the cover of the mountains, she came to David and she met them. Now David is saying, hmm, I don't know about this. This family, this, this man, he's got to go down. So then what does Abigail do? She brings all of these 
goods. She brings all this feast to David as he's on his way to attack and essentially kill Nabal and his whole family. And she kneels before David. David, it's me, my fault that this is happening. Please, please take these offerings, take these gifts. I am your servant. Please listen to me. My husband, worthless. Please ignore him. I will take care of this. I will make this right. Please forgive us. Please do not attack us. Have some food. Have some wine. Relax. But please save us. Please don't attack us. Because we know 400 men with swords, mm, we don't really have a chance against that, right? They're just a family. They're just a family with land. How does David respond? Abigail, I hear you. I understand you. And I see what you're saying. It's very unfortunate. Your husband is foolish. Your husband is rude, violent, and he has no humility, and he has no gratitude. But Abigail, I see you. I see your wisdom. I see your humility. I see your courage. And I see your faith. I will accept your offering. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am your servant. Please remember me. I will continue to make sure that I serve you and to make sure that my husband doesn't do anything like this again. I am so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I grant your petition, says David. Now, in this moment... Does Nabal know what's happening? He has zero idea. In fact, he is at home. And he has had too much wine. He is not right in his mind. He is drunk. Abigail goes home to tell her husband the great news. We saved us. I saved us. And so we will not be attacked by David's men. We will be able to make it out of here alive. So she goes home and she sees Nabal. He's drunk. She shakes her head. Uh, okay, I'll tell him in the morning. So in the morning, she goes to Nabal and tells him, Nabal, don't be upset. I know I didn't tell you, but I went to David and his men, brought them food and wine and meat, and I asked for forgiveness. And he gave it to us. He granted my petition. And Nabal hears this. And what happens to him? He faints. I know. In the Bible, it literally says his heart turned to stone. Not literally, right? That is, of course, most likely is related to some sort of heart issue. I would assume like a heart attack, maybe, right? And this news shocked him so he had basically a heart attack. And the next day, he died. I know. I know. The Lord knew. The Lord knew what was going to happen, and so did David. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has avenged the insult I received at the hand of Nabal, and has kept back his servant from wrongdoing. The Lord has returned the evil of Nabal on his own head. So then, David actually goes and sends for Abigail. And what does he do? Takes her as his wife. I know. 
Very interesting. Now, during this time, let me remind you, it was actually very common for kings to have multiple wives, remember? And so while this is not condoned today and from the New Testament, don't get any ideas, uh, we do know that this was actually very common. You know of King Solomon, you know King Saul, they had multiple, multiple wives. And in this case, David also took on another wife. Um, and so he brought in Abigail to his kingdom and to his land and to his family, and she became his wife. What an interesting turn of events. But might I remind you, Abigail herself was in a very rough marriage, and she was still loyal and faithful to her husband till the day he died. She put herself, her own life on the line to make sure that her family and her husband, her foolish husband, was protected and safe. That is a good diplomat. That is someone who is loyal to their country, loyal to their family, loyal to their land, and can know how to negotiate, how to defend, how to be a good diplomat. Now, from the story, what can we learn? What can we learn from Abigail? One of the less common stories of the women in the Bible, it was an incredibly tense incredibly difficult, incredibly scary situation. If you were in that moment, I don't know how many of us would have actually said, oh, let me go and make a plan and let me see it through. When you face a challenge, do you respond like Abigail? Are you a true diplomat of God? What do we need in the face of challenges? Now our challenges may look a little different, I don't think you have 400 men with swords coming for your family. Yeah, not today at least, right? Uh, maybe you might be uh, in the future subject to cyber attacks, maybe voice phishing, maybe just some petty theft on the street. In Korea, we're pretty, pretty safe. I don't think we have those kinds of dangers where we're at risk of our whole family being obliterated. But we have smaller challenges. For example, we have another test coming up, finals. We have SATs. We have college applications. We have knowing PTCs. We have weekly tests, assessments, spelling tests. And we even have fights among friendships. Fight with your parents. And sometimes it's even smaller. Just an essay or a project that's due, but you are behind. What do you do in the face of those challenges? How you act in those small challenges will tell us how you'll act in the bigger ones. So, we can see from Abigail, she acted with wisdom. She was able to decide in that split moment, okay, what do I need to do to make sure that my family is safe? Make sure, let me go talk to David. But I'm not going to come empty-handed. Let me bring him some gifts. There's wisdom in that moment. Secondly, she was humble. She was showing humility. What action did she take that showed humility? She kneeled before him and said, forgive me. Forgive us for what we've done, my husband, on behalf of my husband, right? She wasn't there as a rich man's wife. Hey, what are you doing? No, nope. we are so sorry for what we did. She had courage. Mind you, David had 400 men with weapons behind him and they didn't have to listen to her. They didn't have to give her the time of day. They did not have to accept her offering or grant her petition. There's a lot of courage in that. And finally, she had faith that God would provide and that the righteous, righteousness would prevail and the righteous man and woman would be saved. Do you approach your challenges with wisdom? Do you approach your challenge with humility or with pride? Do you approach it with courage or with fear? And do you approach your challenges with faith, knowing that God will deliver? In the small things that we do, 
and in the big things that were faced in. Let's think about how the diplomat of the Bible, Abigail, faced challenges, faced adversity, faced difficulties in her life, and how she was able to approach them with the right heart and the right mind, with wisdom, humility, courage, and faith. Let's pray.